Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Somebody sent me this file. It's evidently etched on the back of a mirror. And they wanted, I think it's the same gentleman that asked me last week for a circle, and I did. And I almost wasn't going to do it because this is a lot harder being a square, but not really. I've kind of done it. I did this in about five minutes just playing with it. It looks pretty good. I would add maybe the half, half triangles down at the bottom. So let's just make one real quick. And I'm going to call this one... Um, negative space because I'm not going to worry about the lines that go through here. And you can see my lines aren't very perfect. So in this one, it looks like I, I kind of saw elongated mountains. And you could do this, but you know, to get it perfect and everything, I thought, let's do elong or negative space. So let's go to object and convert that to a curve. Take the shape tool, grab all of them and add nodes till we have about that many. Take them all, right click and convert them to curves. Change our nudge distance to like a quarter of an inch. And thankfully we don't have to do the whole thing. I'm just gonna nudge that up a quarter of an inch. You know what, that's too much. Let's go uh, change our nudge back to 0.18, just making stuff up here. Grab the shape tool, grab that. Cause we kind of want to flow, we don't want a mountain. And I'm gonna show you why in a second. And I am gonna have to break this video into parts cause I, if it gets too long, um, you won't get anything out of it. And, um, so what I said earlier, I'm just using the, the up arrow key. Let's kind of look at them, see if they look like Pretty good, even mountains. So this is why I draw in the center of the page. Because instead of doing that all the way around, which you could very well, you could grab that node and right click and break it apart. Grab that node, right click and break it apart. Now take that top arrow and move it out of the way. Take that one, move it out of the way. Get our virtual segment delete key and delete those two lines. And this is why I draw in the center of the page. And I missed a line right there. Let's move that out of the way. Whenever you see something that's not centered. All right, Control D and make a duplicate. Let's bring in some indexing lines and hit P, put them in the center of the page so we know that we're in the center and move that to the center of the page. Double click on it, make sure it is. And it'll change the shape tool if you don't hit that arrow. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Control D, 180 degrees. Sometimes Corel will keep rotating them and sometimes it won't. Now we've already got our wave pattern kind of the outside and that's why I really thought about this. Let's get another rectangle and make it 10 inches. Hit P. Now we've got a shape, but let's use the Smart Fill tool to fill that in. And what that did, it, it made all my nodes complete. So I'm gonna hit P, put it in the center of the page. I'm gonna left click, right click. Now we need some things to put in there. So we can take a polygon tool, four-sided, and make it elongated. Now we need to just kind of bring it in here and see if it's too big. And this is where you could spend a lot of time. That looks pretty good. We are gonna, it is a polygon, so we need to convert it to a curve and take away those two nodes. And now we've got a shape. Now to make this thing perfect, you want an indexing line to make sure it's in there. Now I want to move this thing over to that indexing line and that way I'm in the center between the hump. Same thing on this end. Bring an indexing line and have it snap to that node. Control D and make a duplicate Holding down the control button will help keep you even, and it should keep you right tr on that track. Now shift select both these, holding down the shift key. And the one I practice on, I think it's gonna be the same. I went to effects, blend, and I blended them 12 times. Now, well, they're, they're too close. They're too close. I made them too big. So let's make our rectangle 
a little bit shorter. And let's bring it in, have it snap to there. See, the blend makes it so easy to do. Control D and make a duplicate, holding down the control button, move it over, and it should, if you're near the bottom, you can still hold down the control button, and it should stay right on that line. Now let's get the blend, shift select, blend it 12 times. Uh, really, I want a line going through here, but we're going to call that it. That's going to call that good for the video. Now, what I should have done is made a duplicate. Now, go up to object, break blend apart, go up to object and ungroup. And we need one of these rectangles. That should be ungroup. Control D and make a duplicate. And let's put it right up here. We need a back to a, or not a rectangle, a diamond shape. So I'm gonna control D and make a duplicate and then I'm gonna flip it. Now we've got a diamond shape in the middle. I should have left one of those uh, diamonds not did like we did and made the round the top. But I can take away these nodes, hit delete, and we've got pretty much of a rectangle, or a, I call it a diamond. Now what we need to do is figure out where we're gonna put this next one. So let's move our indexing line, and it should hit that node. So we want this one on this node. Okay, same thing here. Let's move this to that node, Control D, you know what, I actually want to go to the other side. I want it all the way over here. And I, I really suggest you probably move them uh, incrementally at the same time. Control D and make a duplicate. And what I meant by that is make sure they're off the edge, the same amount. But since I'm holding down the control button, now, we'll look at the indexing line and see, when, see I'm, I'm a little bit off. So take your four-way marker and go right there. Now, shift select. Now we're adding one this time. So go to effects or effects, blend and blend 13 times instead of 12. Look at that. Now, we need to ungroup this. We'll break the blend apart first and then go to group and ungroup. I don't want that one anymore. I want that one. And what, okay, here's a good little insight. Take your, take your pick tool. Well, we should probably, I should probably lock that. I'm gonna lock the outside so we can't touch it anymore. Take your pick tool and just run, holding down your alt button, run down there and grab those center ones. Let's group them together, control G. Let's control D and make a duplicate. And now let's move them over. And this is what I was saying exponentially or however you wanna say it. You know, you wanna probably have some guide but we're gonna, to get a distance, but we're gonna put it right there. And since we've got a group, we can put it right there. Now you see what I did, I, I moved it that away. I actually should have made another diamond. Let's ungroup control. I'm making this really hard. Control U to ungroup. Control D to make a duplicate of this guy and move it over and I would, I would definitely move your indexing line to here and put this one holding down the control button so it'll stay even on the plane. And I could just keep going. I'm gonna do one more part. Grab all those. Let's group them together, control G, control D and make a duplicate. 
and let's move them down and over. And I need to get, and that's why I grouped them together. Get our indexing line right there and then have this one go to right there. And if, if you're gonna ever do this, you know, maybe think about your lines and I'm a little bit high and that's too much of a nudge. So let's nudge it 0 0.02, nudge that down a little bit. And you could do a lot of testing to get a, a line between here. Now what we can do, I kind of like that. Let's control D and make a duplicate and move this next one to here. Halfway will work. But we need a we need a reference point, so we'll put it there and move this reference to here. Now to make it just easy and simple, I'm going to take the virtual segment delete key and delete the bottom half of these. I'm actually going to delete that one and that one. You know, I'm going to delete that one and that one. And you'll see why in just a second. Now, whoop, I need one more deletion. I should break the curve apart. Now, if we really, let's look at the picture. You know, there's actually a line below our lowest triangle. And I apologize for taking this so long. So let's do this. Let's take this box, this rectangle that we have locked, go to object, lock, and unlock. And let's make our rectangle We've got to ungroup it, break curve apart. Because I want this rectangle smaller. Let's make it 9.75. I'm making this a lot more difficult than it has to be. What I should have done, let's do that. Let's back up. Because we have an abs abs a really good way to fill these in now. Let's fill that in and let's, let's change our nudge factor to 15 inches and let's move that and move that over. So without even having to look, just take your shape tool or your, that didn't work. We must have a leak. Oh man. So I've got one I'm going to have to fix, but you get the idea and we can fix that. So I've got all but one here. So now we can actually take away these lines. We don't need them anymore. Run right through there. I'm gonna get rid of my sorry about this. You know what I could break the probably it's probably a ungroup them. I just need to get rid of these rectangles. We don't need them anymore because I need to make us a, a negative space on this side. So now let's let's take this rectangle and make it that 9.25 or 9.75. Now let's take this. We need to duplicate one of these rectangles, or I keep calling everything a rectangle. And I apologize for how long this has taken. And I'm just eyeballing it. And then we're going to nudge it back over. And we're going to left click, right click. So now we have that. Now let's take all this, control G to group it together. We're almost done. Control D to make a duplicate. And why we move this, not the middle. So control G to make a duplicate, control D to make, or control G to group it, control D to make a duplicate. We're not in the center. Sometimes it doesn't always work. I'm gonna have to zoom in. You know what, maybe that's not in the center. No, the indexing line's in the center. Okay, now it is. Now let's rotate it 90 degrees. 
Look at that, folks. 180 degrees. So what I did is control D and make it all the way around. This is almost identical to the one I did earlier. I love it. I think it looks cool. <clears throat> Let's take our outer box and our new inner box and move them out of the way and let's weld all these. What that's gonna do is put those two together that look like that. Now let's move our box back over. And I apologize, I should have broken this into two videos, but we're almost done. Let's go and ungroup, break the curve apart, take our one there, control D. And to do this the best way, well, let's just do that. So what are the videos? three days long. The best way to do this would be to have the center, I should have rotated this to, to 45 degrees, so you can see what you're doing straight up and down. So we're gonna take, if I can get my zoom tool to work, we're gonna take this one, break it apart, take this one, control D and make a duplicate, and move it up to there. Look at that. Now, how do you get them all four corners? Same way we've been doing it all day. Control D and make a duplicate. Move it to the center. Check it. Rotate it 90 degrees. Control D, 180 degrees. Control D. Now let's group all this together. Control G and rotate it 45 degrees and then take the smart fill tool. And I think this is my longest video I've ever done. That's pretty cool. I, I really like it and you can see I didn't, because you almost got a point going nice. It is different than his mirror, but it's just as cool, I think. I uh, hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.